Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Auto. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another case study. Right behind me, I have a 1999 Ford F-150. It's got the V6 4.2 liter engine. And the customer complaint is that the wiper blades are not working. Uh, it's been raining all week and it's forecasted to rain for the next few days. And actually right now it's drizzling outside. So they definitely need the wiper blades. You guys already know how we do it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so first things first, let's go ahead and move inside the vehicle and verify the complaint. You guys can see it's actually raining right now. So we definitely need the wiper blades to be working. So we're gonna go inside and I got the key right here. Now the interesting thing is, is that this is a manual transmission. You don't see too many of these on the road anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot down on the clutch, make sure this thing is in neutral, stick the key in and let's start this thing up. All right, the engine is running. Next up, we wanna go over here to the wiper switch and I'm going to turn this all the way to the high setting. And if you guys look, you can see that our wiper blades are not responding. So we could also try a different setting. I'm just gonna kind of click through these. And you guys can see we have no response from the wiper blades. Now, as far as what our next step should be, I mean, we could start with the obvious thing to do, which would be to check the fuses. I know that's something that a lot of you guys would do next. And actually, that's what I was going to do. But uh, I ran into something interesting here. Let me show you guys. So we have a fuse box underneath the hood here. And we also have one inside. But if you take a look at the lid for the fuse box, you'll notice that Ford does not label these fuses. They number them. So they don't tell you exactly what these fuses are in the fuse box. You have to use uh, the owner's manual or the factory service manual in order to determine which fuse is which. And to be honest with you guys, the owner's manual for this truck no longer exists. I already checked in the glove box. I looked throughout the truck. I could not find it. So at this point, I don't even know which fuses are which. So really my only other choice is to check the factory service manual using a program like Mitchell or All Data, which honestly is probably a really good idea because at the same time, we can go ahead and pull up the wiring diagram for the system and figure out how it works. Using the wiring diagram to familiarize ourselves with how the system operates is going to be key in us not only properly diagnosing this problem, but also finding the most efficient and the quickest way to do it. So that's gonna be my next step. I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys over to the computer and let's check out this wiring diagram. All right guys, so what we're looking at here is the wiring diagram for the windshield wiper and the washer system. Now I know at first glance, this wiring diagram may seem a little bit overwhelming, but I'm gonna try to take you through this diagram and try to make this as easy to understand as possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by locating the components. If you look at these uh, blue box areas, these are gonna be the different components in the system. And we'll start with this component right here in the center. This is going to be the actual windshield wiper motor. And if you move up here, you'll see that this big box right here is labeled the battery junction box. This is going to be the fuse box that's located on the left side of the engine compartment. This is the fuse box that houses our different relays and fuses. Now, if you take a look at the top here, you'll see that we have another uh, blue box and this box is showing us a 30 amp fuse. And if you take a look at the description, it says here that this is the central junction box and it's located underneath the left side of the dash. So this is going to be a fuse box that's inside of the vehicle separate from this fuse box that's under the hood. Now, if we take our attention uh, to the lower part of the page here, you'll see this rectangular box is labeled the generic electronic module, also known as GEM, and it's located behind the left side of the dash. Then finally, if you take a look at the very bottom of the page, you'll see this uh, big blue box with the dotted outline. This here is the multifunction switch, also known as the windshield wiper and washer switch. So this is going to be the switch that's actually on the steering column that you use in order to turn the wiper blades on and also to activate the washer pump. Now we do have one more uh, little box over here for the four wheel drive mode switch, but this vehicle is not a four wheel drive. So we're not going to concern ourselves with this. This is not applicable in our situation here. Okay, so now that we know what our different components are on this wiring diagram, I'm gonna to try to do my best to explain to you guys how this system works. And I'm gonna do that by starting here at this uh, generic electronic module, also known as the GEM module. And the reason I'm doing that is because really 
this is where the magic happens. This is the brains of the operation. And what I want to do is pretty much kind of split this wiring diagram into two halves. So just pretend I kind of drew a line across the diagram here in the center of this GEM module. And what I want you guys to think of is anything below this line here down is going to be considered an input to the GEM module. So when we think about inputs, we're thinking about the request signal from the multifunction switch. So whenever you uh, use the multifunction switch to try to activate the windshield wipers, you're going to be sending a signal to the GEM module. And of course that signal coming from that multifunction switch to the GEM module is going to be considered an input to the module. And from there, the module is going to take your request signal and it is going to do whatever you ask it to do. And it's going to do that by controlling the output side. Now the output side would be considered anything above this sort of imaginary line that's drawn between the GEM module here. Again, I'm drawing an imaginary line across the GEM module. Anything below this line is considered an input and anything above this line is considered an output. Another way we can think of it is the input can be considered a command and the output could be considered an action. So now that you guys understand that, let's go ahead and start with the input side because it's probably the easier one to understand. So if you take a look at the multifunction switch down here, uh, you'll see that we have two ganged switches here because if you look at this dotted line right here through the center, that connects these two switches. What that means is that whenever you move the switch, these two switches move together. We call them a ganged switch. So if you take a look at this pink and yellow wire here, uh, you'll see that it's labeled as the wiper mode select. And if you take a look at this light blue and orange wire, you'll see it's labeled the interval delay wash. So the way this works is pretty simple. Uh, for instance, on this pink and yellow wire, what the GEM module is going to do is it's going to send out a voltage on this pink and yellow wire and that voltage is going to reach the multifunction switch. Now, whenever the multifunction switch is in the off position, you'll see that that voltage has to travel through three different resistors along its path to ground. So if you follow again, this pink and yellow wire, imagine the voltage being sent through here. It's in the off position here. And you'll see it has to go through this resistor and it gives you a measurement of the resistor uh, 47.6 ohms or K ohms, excuse me. And if you look here, you'll see that we have another set of resistors and it gives us another resistance measurement, 11.3 K ohms and over here, 4.08 K ohms. So it has to go through all of these resistors before it follows its path to ground. So if we highlight this, if you follow this black line here, you can follow it to its uh, path to ground. And what you'll notice is that this ground actually grounds back through the generic electronic module. What that means is that uh, this GEM module is going to have a separate ground and internal to this GEM module is where this dark blue wire is going to find its ground. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Hopefully you're following along. But what I want you guys to understand is the way this GEM module knows what position the switch is, is by looking at the voltage drop that's happening across this wire here. So if you guys could imagine this GEM module is sending, uh, let's say like a 12 volt reference feed or maybe a five volt reference. I'm not really sure what the exact reference voltage is, but what we could assume is that uh, this voltage is going to drop to a certain amount depending on what position the switch is in. So if you guys could imagine in the off position, uh, this is pretty much going to be pretty close to whatever the reference voltage is, whether it be 12 volts or 5 volts. And then when you switch it over to, let's say, here in the center, uh, that's going to drop probably a few volts and so on and so forth. So depending on what position it is, it's going to give a different voltage reading on this wire. And what's happening over here is pretty much the same thing that's going to happen on this light blue and orange wire. Uh, the only difference being, you guys can see the washer switch here. Uh, this is for the windshield washer pump to activate it. So you guys can see that whenever you close this washer switch, you're actually going to completely ground the circuit. So there is no resistance here. It's going to be a straight ground all the way through the module. And that's going to bring this voltage reading pretty much down to near zero. 
So essentially what that means is whenever the GEM module sees zero volts or ground on this pin 13 here, or this light blue and orange wire, it's going to activate or turn on the washer pump. Now that we understand how this input side works, um, we can come up with a pretty simple method to try to eliminate whether or not we have a problem with this multifunction switch. And the easiest way to do that is using a scan tool. Because if you guys uh, remember, this GEM module is a computer module. So we should be able to communicate with this using a scan tool. Now, you may not be able to do it with just a generic scan tool. You have to have a pretty high level scan tool that has uh, the Ford factory software in order to communicate with all of the different modules on the vehicle so that you can connect to this GEM module. Once you connect to the GEM module using a scan tool, you're going to want to look at the live data or the data PIDs. And hopefully what you're going to find is you're going to find a data PID for the wiper mode select and also a data PID for the interval delay wash. And what those data PIDs are going to tell you are more than likely going to be uh, voltage data PIDs. So what you'll see on these data PIDs are going to be the voltage changes that are happening whenever you move the switch. This could be a quick and easy method to use in order to determine whether or not we have a problem with this multifunction switch. Because if we look at these data PIDs here and we're moving the switch and these data PIDs are not changing, then we know our problem more than likely is on the input side, not on the output side. If we find that we have a problem on the input side, then of course, before we can call it a bad switch, we're going to have to do some pinpoint checking, such as checking to make sure that we have a good ground here, also checking to make sure that these voltages are reaching the switch and that we don't have some type of wiring problem in between the GEM module and the actual switch. So once again, this is going to be our input side. Now let's go ahead and move over to the output side. Okay guys, so moving to the output side, Again, everything above this imaginary line that we drew through the center of the GEM module, this is what we're going to be focusing on. Now, this is where things get a little more complicated, so bear with me. I'm going to try to do my best to explain how this works and how this GEM module is going to run this wiper motor. Now, before we move any further, I do want to take a moment to talk about something uh, pretty important, something that has to do with the way these wiring diagrams are drawn up. If you guys did not know, uh, wiring diagrams are always drawn in their normal state. And what that means is that when you look at this wiring diagram here, it's showing us the way the circuit looks whenever the system is off. So right now, if you look at the position of the relays, the position of the switches, uh, all of this is being shown to you as if uh, nothing was being commanded on. We're just looking at this in its normal state whenever the switch is not on and there is no power getting to the wiper motor. So with that being said, let's go ahead and continue. Now, as far as where to start, personally, I like to start with the component that we're trying to control. If you guys think about it, uh, in this case, our windshield wiper motor, everything else in this diagram, relays, control modules, switches, they're all here for one purpose to try to control this windshield wiper motor. So this is going to be our end result here. This is where I want to start and I want to work backwards. So again, looking at this box right here, this is going to be our windshield wiper motor. And if you guys take a look inside of this box, you'll see the actual motor that does all of the work. So if we take a closer look at this electric motor here, uh, you'll see that we have three main contact points. If you look at the top here, you'll see this contact here is designated as low, which is referring to the low speed. And over here, this contact right here is designated high, which is the high speed. And if you look at this third contact down here, uh, if you follow it out, you'll see that this is going to be our ground to the electric motor. You guys can see the ground here is located on the rear right fender apron ground G105. This is going to be our ground connection to this electric motor. So it's pretty straightforward. Essentially, if you want to activate the high speed, you're going to want to send a power feed to the motor uh, through this contact here. And if you want to activate the low speed, you're going to want to send a power through this contact here that says low speed. And if you guys take a look at the relay that's up here, which is designated wiper high low relay, uh, you'll see that that's exactly what this relay is meant to do. Uh, you can see on pin four, that's going to be our connection directly to the low speed side of the motor. And if you look at pin five, 
that's going to be the connection directly to the high speed of the motor. So this relay is going to decide whether it's going to send power uh, to the low side or to the high side of the motor. And if you guys look over here at the control side of the relay, which is where you're going to find this coil winding, uh, you'll see that it is directly controlled by the GEM module. And the way this works is if we follow this back up through here, you'll see that we have a power feed that comes in from this fuse number 11, which is a 30 amp fuse that's located in the central junction box. This is going to be the fuse box that's inside the vehicle uh, underneath the dash. So once again, uh, power is coming through this fuse, it's traveling through this white and black wire, it's reaching the relay at pin one, uh, power is gonna go through this coil winding of the relay, and it's going to come out on this light blue wire here, which goes directly to the GEM module. Now the way this works is whenever the GEM module wants to activate the high speed of the wiper motor, it is going to ground this circuit here. When it grounds this circuit, that's going to energize this magnetic coil inside of this relay. This switch is going to close and move over to pin number five. That's how this GEM module controls whether or not this relay is going to be feeding the low side or the high side of the wiper motor. It's either going to ground the circuit or it's not. Now taking our focus back up to this uh, wiper high-low relay, again, you can see that this is drawn in its normal state. Right now, the GEM module is not grounding the circuit, so it's in its normal state where this is contacting pin number four. So if we wanna figure out where the power is coming from that feeds this wiper motor, we're gonna to have to follow our way out through pin number three out to this red wire here. You guys can see this red wire comes out and it goes over to the wiper run park relay. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting because if you guys notice in its normal state, this wiper run park relay is a direct connection to pin number four here. So I'm going to highlight this pin and it's going to highlight this light blue wire. And if we follow this light blue wire out, it actually comes back to the wiper motor. Now, if we take a closer look at this wiper motor, you'll see that there's actually a switch internal to this motor assembly. And if you look at the switch here, uh, there's two contacts. One contact says run and one contact says park. What that's referring to is the park position switch. Now, if you take a look at uh, this switch right now in its normal state, it's in the park position. So what that means is that the wiper blades are all the way down in their normal state. And in this position, you can see that it's just going to be a direct contact to ground. So at the moment in this normal position, there is no power feed going to this wiper high-low relay. Now I am going to explain to you why this switch is here, but at this moment, I don't wanna focus on this. I'm going to deselect this. Uh, we're gonna come back and I'm going to explain to you why the switch is here and how this thing works. But like I said, right now, I wanna divert our attention back over to this wiper run park relay. So I'm going to deselect this pin number four here. And what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that this wiper run park relay is in the closed position. So again, this is the switching side of the relay and this is the control side of the relay. And again, you guys can see that the control side of the relay gets its power feed from the same fuse. So if I highlight this here, you can follow this back through this dotted line here and follow it up to this fuse number 11, which is a 30 amp fuse. It's pretty evident now that this fuse feeds uh, pretty much all of the different circuits that we're dealing with here. It's going to feed the control side of all of these relays as well as the switching side of all of these relays. But what I wanna focus on again is going to be this wiper run park relay. So again, power feed comes in from our fuse number 11. It goes into uh, pin one, which is the control side of this relay. It travels through this coil winding and it comes out on pin number two. And if you follow this wire out, it goes back to the GEM module. And if you look here in the GEM module, you'll see that it's designated uh, brake run relay. So the way this circuit works here is pretty simple. Whenever the GEM module wants to activate or turn on the wiper motor, it has to ground this relay here. When it grounds this circuit, that's going to energize the magnetic coil here inside of the relay, which is going to close this switch 
and create a direct contact to our power source here on pin number five. If you follow this pin number five, you'll see that it gets its power from the same 30 amp fuse, fuse number 11, that's located in the central junction box. So once again, when the GEM module grounds this control side of the relay, this switch is going to close, power is going to come from fuse 11 through this relay, and it's going to travel out through this red wire, and it's going to go to the wiper high-low relay. Now, depending on what position this high-low relay is in, that power is either going to get sent out to pin number four, which is going to be for the low side, or to pin number five, which is going to be for the high side. That is essentially how this GEM module turns on and off this wiper motor. So let's take a moment and imagine what happens whenever we uh, set this wiper switch to the high position. If we close the switch, put it to the high position, the GEM module is going to recognize this on the input side. It's going to understand that we want to activate the wipers at high speed. And the way it's going to do that is it's going to do two things. Number one, it's going to ground this pin number 18, which is for the wiper high-low relay. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to ground this pin number 19 for the brake run relay. Now, if you guys could imagine, if you switch this switch over to the low side, the GEM module is going to recognize that and it's going to let go of the ground here on pin number 18 which is going to allow this wiper high-low relay to go back to its normal state where it's in contact with pin number four, which is our path to the low side of the motor. But you guys have to understand that the GEM module still has to ground this brake run relay. Anytime this GEM module wants to turn on the wiper motor, it's going to have to ground this brake run relay. Another quick scenario that we can imagine would be setting this wiper switch to an intermittent or a delay function. When we do that, this GEM module is going to recognize uh, the position that we have our switch in, and it's going to activate this brake run relay here, but it's gonna do so using an internal timer. So if you guys could imagine, there is an internal timer inside of this GEM module, and it's going to turn on and off this brake run relay. That's how we get our intermittent wiper function. Now that we understand how these two relays work together, um, I want to take a moment to talk about this park switch that's inside of the wiper motor. So if you guys could imagine, whenever you're using your wiper blades and you shut them off, they have to come back to their normal resting place, which is what we call the park position. That's what this switch is here for. It does two different things. Number one is it tells the GEM module whenever the wiper arms are in the park position. And number two is it creates a contact point for the wiper motor to get direct power from the fuse while the brake run relay is not being activated. So again, if you guys take a look at this park switch, um, if we could just imagine that this switch is in the run position here, it's going to be a direct contact to our fused power source. So you guys can see when I highlight this, it is a direct contact from our fuse. And the reason that is there is because Whenever you turn your wiper switch off, the GEM module is going to let go of this ground on this park run relay. When it lets go of the ground, this is going to release this switch here inside of the wiper run park relay, and it's going to revert to its normal position. Again, in its normal position, it does not have any direct contact to the power source, so the power to run this wiper motor until it gets to the park position has to come from somewhere. And that's exactly what the switch provides. It provides a power to the wiper motor even after you turn the switch off and the GEM module deactivates this relay, your wiper motor still has power enough for the wiper arms to make it down to the park position. I guess while we're here, we can also take a look at the washer pump that's on this wiring diagram as well. And you guys can see this is a pretty straightforward setup. Essentially, whenever you close this switch here, the washer switch, that's going to ground this circuit here, telling the GEM module to activate the washer pump. And the way the GEM module is going to do that is it's going to ground this pin number 24 here, which is a tanner red wire, which is going to activate the control side of this relay. Again, the control side of this relay gets its power from fuse number 11. 
and also the switching side gets its power from fuse number 11. So again, imagine the GEM module grounding this circuit here, energizing this coil, magnetizing it, which causes this switch to close, which provides a path for the power to reach the washer pump assembly. And of course we have a ground on the other side here, which is located at the right front radiator support. Again, a pretty simple circuit to figure out. I just figured I'd cover it while we were here. So now that you guys understand how this system works, you can see that there's a lot of different ways that we can go about diagnosing what could be wrong with the system. Of course, the first and probably easiest thing to do would be to uh, go to this fuse box here and check fuse number 11. Because if we have a problem with this fuse, none of this is going to operate. So that would definitely be the first thing you want to check. Next thing we could do is probably check uh, these relays here, the wiper run park relay and the wiper high low relay. Uh, or we could also, again, connect the scan tool to the vehicle and try to communicate with this GEM module and see if we're getting an input signal from this multifunction switch. Again, there's a lot of different ways we can test this system, but I think first things first, let's go ahead and move back over to the vehicle and check this fuse. Okay, so moving back over to the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and check this fuse number 11 using a test light. And it's going to be the fuse box inside of the dash here. You guys can see I got the cover off and I already went ahead and I located fuse number 11. It's gonna be this one right here. So if you look at the fuse box, that's going to be the one at the very bottom, the one that says 30 amp. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my test light and I'm going to touch each side of this fuse and we're gonna see if it lights up. Okay, you guys can see that side of the fuse is lit. I'm gonna go ahead and move to the other side of the fuse and our test light lights on both sides of this fuse. So this means that this fuse is good and the circuit is getting power. Okay, so now that we know that our 30 amp fuse is good, I think our next step should be to go ahead and bust out the scan tool and try to do some bi-directional controls with the GEM module. Uh, but I think there's one thing that we could do before we do that, and that is just to verify whether or not the washers work, the windshield washers. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the switch here. Now to operate these windshield washers, you can see the little logo there. It tells you to push in on the switch. And when you push in on the switch, you should activate the washer pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and push in. As you guys can see, our washers are not coming on. Not only are the washers not coming on, but our wiper blades are not working. So this could quite possibly point to a bad switch. And by a bad switch, I mean the uh, multifunction switch here. But like I said, the easiest way to verify whether or not this switch is working is to go ahead and use a scan tool, communicate with the GEM module, and check to make sure that it's receiving the input from this wiper switch. Okay guys, so I've got my scan tool here. Now what I'm using is gonna be the Launch X431 Pro Mini. Now the company did send this to me, but no, this is not a sponsored video. They just sent this to me. They wanted me to test this out. They wanted me to see if I like it. And I can tell you guys right now, I've had this for the past couple of weeks and I'm just blown away by the amount of functionality that this thing has. This scan tool is probably the best bang for your buck as far as what it can do versus other scan tools on the market that are in the same price range. So if you look at the back of the unit here, we've got this little Bluetooth attachment. This is the OBD2 connector. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in to the OBD2 socket down here. You guys can see we're connected. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on forward. You guys can see the software there. We're gonna go ahead and hit submit. Okay, we're gonna do an automatic search. It has detected the VIN number. You can see 1999 F150 4.2. We're gonna go ahead and hit yes. Now we can come in here and go to system selection. We're going to choose the GEM module, generic electric module. I'm gonna go ahead and click it, wait for this thing to communicate. And it is telling us that this module is not responding. Okay, that's strange. Let me go ahead and back out, try it one more time. Click on GEM, give this thing a moment to communicate. Yeah, this module is not responding. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and try another module. Maybe we can try the PCM. See if we have communication there. Okay, well that's interesting. Looks like we have communication with the PCM. Uh, while we're in here, let's go ahead and read fault code, see if we have anything pertaining to communication codes. Retrieve continuous memory data trouble codes. Okay, it's telling us there is no DTC. Let's go ahead and move back. 
Okay, let's check out the data stream. Here we can pull up some data pids. Okay, so as you guys can see, we have a number of different data pids we can look at. Uh, let's try one more. Let's go ahead and move over to the instrument cluster, see if we have communication with that. Okay, as you guys can see, it led us into the instrument panel. We can read fault codes, see if we have anything interesting here. Okay, so we have a fault code for the oil pressure switch, fault code C1284. Uh, but this, I don't think, has anything to do with what we're dealing with here. Our wipers are not working, and we don't have any communication with the GEM module. Okay, guys, before we go any further, let's do a quick recap of what we know so far. So number one, we know that the wiper motors are not functioning. Number two, we know that the washer pump is not functioning. Number three, we know that our fuse is not blown. Our 30 amp fuse that feeds both of those components are not blown. And finally, we know that we do not have any communication with the GEM module. Hopefully you guys are following along and hopefully you understand why I'm starting to think that we have a bad GEM module. Now, of course, before we can call this module bad, there's a few checks we need to do pertaining to the main powers and the main grounds of this particular module. Anytime you have a module that is not communicating, the first thing you always wanna do is make sure that that module has all of its powers and all of its grounds present in order for it to operate. So that's the next thing we need to do. We're gonna go ahead and pull up a wiring diagram and try to locate all of the powers and grounds for this GEM module. You know what guys, there is one more thing that we should probably do while we're still looking at the vehicle, and that is to verify that the wiper motor actually works. The reason I wanna do that is because uh, sometimes I can get a little bit ahead of myself. You know, right now it's kind of pointing to it being a bad GEM module, and we're, you know, on the right path to verifying that, but we should probably just stop and make sure that the wiper motor itself isn't bad. Because sometimes, you know, we could diagnose it as a bad GEM module, sell it to the customer, replace it, only to find out that the wiper motor itself also needs to be replaced. It's easy enough to do. We're gonna go ahead and try to bypass the relay and see if we can get this wiper motor to come on. So let me take you guys under the hood. This is our relay box, and I've already gone ahead and located the wiper high-low relay. It's gonna be this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. Ah, let me grab a pair of pliers for that. Lift up on this. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now that we have this relay out, I'm gonna go ahead and use this tester kit that I have. Now you guys have seen me use this multiple times in a lot of different videos that I have. If you guys didn't already know, this is a master relay test kit made by Lyle Tools. Of course, you guys see the Mac logo. I bought this on the tool truck. I paid twice as much for this on the tool truck. So whatever you guys do, don't buy this on the tool truck. All they do is rebrand this. This is made by Lyle. You can pick this up on Amazon for half the price. Click the link in the description and it'll take you where you can buy this. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the old relay. You guys can see what style relay it is. And we're going to find the correct adapter, which I believe is going to be this one over here, this blue one. You guys can see we have the three legs at the top and the two at the bottom. So we're gonna take this over to the vehicle and plug it in. Okay, so I'm gonna plug this in, but before I do, you guys take a look. You can see these little pins here are numbered. And if you guys recall from the wiring diagram, pins four and five are going to be our high and low. That's how we're going to turn the wiper motor on. We're going to feed a power into pin four and to pin five. So when we feed a power to pin four, that's going to power up the low speed of the wiper motor. And when we power up pin five, that's going to power up the high speed of the wiper motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this into the slot here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my power probe and I'm going to connect these two alligator clips to the battery. Here's our positive and here is our negative. Now, if you guys take a look at the power probe, we have a little rocker switch here, positive and negative. Whenever we flip the rocker switch to the top, we're going to feed a power to the tip of this power probe. You guys can see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch pin number four, which is going to be our low speed. And I'm going to feed a power into it. And we're gonna see if these wiper blades come on. Okay, that is our low speed. Now let's go ahead and move over to pin number five. This is going to be our high speed. I'm gonna go ahead and feed a power into that. And as you guys can see, our wiper blades are operating. 